Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Not live. Not dead either, but just not live, you know. Uh, anyway, today yes, uh, I'm bringing you Chapter 6, I believe it is, of my whole darn CD collection. Yeah, we're just chugging right along here. I just did a chapter last weekend, I know, but I was in the mood to do another one. And uh, partly because I might not be able to get a video to you uh, either of the next two weekends. Uh, I'm just kind of putting that out there as worst case scenario, uh, for lack of a better word. So that way I'll pleasantly surprise you if I do get a video out either of the next two weekends. So yay. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys have had a good weekend. Uh, the weekend is wrapping up. Uh, Memorial Day weekend here in the States. Uh, I uh, had a nice, uh, a nice relaxing weekend. And uh, yes, uh, just just putting out here, out here, not to do a lot of flag waving here because that's not my thing. But uh, just remember that Memorial Day is not about a three-day weekend or barbecues with friends and family. Uh, I, well, I mean, it's not just about those things. It is about uh, if you just at least just take a moment to remember the uh, servicemen who died fighting for our freedoms, the freedoms of our parents and grandparents, and for the freedoms of certain uh, other countries in the world as well. So just putting that out there. So uh, yes, hope you guys had a good weekend and a good week. And uh, yes, let's just get along, uh, get right going into chapter six. Uh, I don't have any recent rivals because I just did chapter five last weekend. So starting off with an artist by the name of Dean. This guy is a uh, uh, Belgian uh, idol winner. Uh, he has a last name, obviously, I just can't remember what it is. He was just built on the CD as Dean. And this one is, in the grand scheme of idol recordings, is not one of the better ones. Most of these are covers, and his voice is more or less just okay. But, you know, it's, I have, th this might be only one of just two Belgian idol CDs that I have, so. I just wanted to have idol uh, CDs from as many CDs from idol alumni from as many countries as I could in my collection. At least that was the goal at one point. I there were some that I was seriously not impressed with and got rid of them, but uh, this is one that I decided to keep. Uh, moving on from there, we have Gavin DeGraw. I have his debut album Chariot, and this is the one that has the uh, bonus CD with his with the acoustic version of versions of the songs as well as his sophomore album, Self-Titled. And this one, oh yes, this is the Target exclusive that has, I don't think it has, it has any bonus tracks on the CD, but it ha does have a DVD with it. So, and yeah, I already had the regular edition of this, and I think I found this one at, uh, maybe it was at one of the stores in Portland, I think. And so yeah, I decided to go ahead and get it. And I did have more Gavin DeGraw albums than that. Um, up until fairly recently, but yeah, in my last CD purge, I just decided, you know, I just was not fond of their of his latest albums, so I got rid of them. And then we have this one you might recognize from a bargain bag from two years ago, I think it was, Joe DeJesu. Uh, he was one of one of my top favorite bargain bag CDs of that year. Uh, very good kind of singer-songwriter stuff, as I recall. It's been a while since I've listened to it. Then we have an uh, artist that you might have heard of, you may have heard of her name. She is more popular because uh, for her acting than she is for her singing, but she is a fantastically talented singer, and those of you who do know her just for her acting may not realize that she has a ridiculously good voice, Leah Delaria. Uh, she was in Orange is the New Black, and she's also, before that, she was a stand-up comic, and a very good one as well. Uh, so yes, this is her first album, Play It Cool, uh, composed, uh, comprised primarily of show tunes from uh, Broadway and so forth. And we also have a covers album of hers. It's called Double Standards. And th on this one, she covers uh, pop and rock songs from the 70s and 80s and maybe from the 60s as well. Uh, she does Call Me by Blondie, uh, Dancing Barefoot by, I can't remember it, David Bowie? I don't think, I don't think it was David Bowie. Should have done my homework. And been caught stealing from uh... <laughs> my brain is not working. Uh, Ritual de lo habitual. What's their name? I can't remember. That was the name of their uh, album. Uh, Black Hole Sun. People are strange, which is a Doors cover. I know that one. <laughs> Sorry. 
and uh, Philadelphia, which is a, the Bruce Springsteen song. So yeah, you can see she does a long, oh, long view, gr a Green Day song. So yeah, she does a broad variety of stuff, and she does it in uh, all of these songs in a bit more of a um, small jazz combo, jazz club kind of a, of a, a vibe to the album. It's really good, really interesting, uh, very unique. And uh, excuse me, got a pop close little notification on my computer. And then we're getting into an artist that I have. I believe no, not the, not his entire discography because I am missing his first album. Uh, a folk artist named Brett Denon, very very good stuff of very Bob Dylan ish. At least he started out that way. And uh, this is his first uh, no his sophomore album. So much more. And then we have Hope for the Hopeless and Lover Boy. Then we have Smoke and Mirrors. This one might be my favorite of his. It's a tie between this one and so much more. And his most recent album, I believe, Por Favor. But no, the songs are not all in Spanish. Actually, I don't think there are any songs in Spanish on here. He just called it Por Favor. So yes, very good uh, folk pop slash folk rock artist if you happen to uh, feel the uh, urge to check him out on streaming. Then we have an artist whose name everybody, I'm sure, has heard of. John Denver, the essential John Denver. I mean, what can I say? He's he's kind of kitschy, and uh, he really only had kind of one year. You know, the the folk, acoustic folk type of stuff. He never really went uh, evolved beyond that. But uh, still, so many so many good songs. I mean, uh, oh, kind of stupid notification on my computer. Leaving on a jet plane, uh, take me home, country roads. Or some of the other. Rocky Mountain High and uh, Sunshine on My Shoulders. Just so many, so many feel-good songs. He's a very he's very much of a feel-good artist. And then we have uh, this is one of my few Eric Clapton related recordings that I decided to keep. This is Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs by Derek and the Dominoes. This is the remastered edition, which is the entire album on one CD decent stuff. I don't get back to it very often, but hey, not bad stuff. And then these next three CDs are thanks to Bargain Bag, uh, Desiree, her debut album Mind Adventures, and uh, the one that's, or actually the two that started it all, I Ain't Movin', her sophomore album, as well as Supernatural, her third album. The latter two of these, uh, you will recall, I found in Bargain Bags, and that led me to pick up her debut album, which you saw a minute ago, Mind, Mind Adventures. Excellent uh, R&B artist. Then we have Devo, their greatest hits. How can you go wrong with Devo's greatest hits? Um, I've been thinking about picking up their studio albums. I just, uh, I've got one on vinyl that I bought in the last couple of months. I haven't really gotten further than that, and actually I, ha I have not listened to that album yet. Yes, I used to have a major problem with a CD backlog, now the problem I have is with a vinyl backlog, so, yeah. It's always something with me, isn't it? Anyway, uh, but yeah, Devo. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, Beautiful World, I, I enjoy that one. And I Can't Get No Satisfaction, a very interesting twist on a uh, Rolling Stones song. Whip It, of course, was their uh, biggest hit of the 80s. And... Uh, Working in the Coal Mine, that's another cover of a much much older song that they, they kind of uh, made their own. So yeah, very interesting and uh, a can't-miss act. you you got to listen to at least their greatest hits, in my opinion. And then here's another one uh, that, well, I don't know if you necessarily have to listen to this guy's greatest hits, but I have them. Uh, Neil Diamond, The Essential, the two-disc Essential set. You know, just just go down the track listing, and you've got a bunch of great, great songs here. Uh, Red Red Wine, uh, he he did the original version of that. Uh, I'm a Believer, that's one of my favorite songs from the 60s. And we have uh, Sweet Caroline, of course. Song Sun Blue, I Am I Said. Uh, America, Hello Again. Yeah. As, as I said, you could just read the entire track listing, and you almost know every song. Then we have a more recent um, pop slash electronic artist. 
Dido with her debut album No Angel. And this one is most popular because of the, uh, the song Here With Me, which was used as the title song from the TV series Roswell. And, but also there's, uh, what's the song that, uh, oh, Thank You, I think, is the one that uh, uh, Eminem used in some way. That's how much I know about that. And then we have a CD from A Bargain Bag this year, or was it, or was it last year? The Din Pedals, a great alt-rock act that kind of uh, disappeared into obscurity after their one and only album. Then we have uh, another artist uh, that I've kind of started to uh, go through her catalog thanks to a bargain bag CD, Celine Dion. Yes, go ahead, go ahead and ridicule, ridicule me if you want to, but hey, she, she's she's good. She's got a fantastic voice. We got to give her that, right? Let's talk about love, and that is that's like her. Oh, she had several like um, French language albums before that, so this is like her fifth or sixth album or something. And then we have The Color of My Love. This, that's her follow-up album. This discography is a little bit spotty. I'm missing albums here and there between these albums that I have. And Falling Into You is the one that uh, I got in the bargain bag, the one that uh, started it all, so to speak. And uh, this one might be my favorite album of hers, A New Day Has Come. A little bit more electronic dancey type stuff than uh, the more ballad stuff she was used to. But eh. And then... Uh, Perhaps my most recent acquisition of hers is actually a live album, uh, A New Day Live in Las Vegas, and it actually comes with a DVD, as well as a couple of new studio recordings. So, if you're a Celine Dion completist, you don't, know, you don't want to miss that one. And then we have a couple of her more recent albums, Taking Chances, and Love Me Back to Life. And I might not be keeping all of these... Um, I have to go back and give some of these a, a re-listen. Um, yeah. Well, you know how it is. I'm sure you you become aware of an artist and you really get into them, and then like six months a year down the road, you kind of cool on them a little bit, and you end up maybe sometimes getting rid of some of the CDs you have. Happens to me anyway. Uh, next one is actually another. Oh, oops! I almost missed one. I keep flipping through the CDs uncontrollably. Somebody stop me! Uh, next up we have another Greatest Hits CD. I think this one, uh, if I'm correct, was in my sister's collection. The, Di uh, the Best of Dire Straits, Sultans of Swing. Uh, another band that is just, uh, you can't say enough good things about, really. Even though, yes, I only have their Greatest Hits. Romeo and Juliet is a great song. And Sultans of Swing is fantastic. And, of course, um, The Walk of Life and Money for Nothing. They're big 80s hits. So, yeah. And I, they're another band that I've kind of been thinking about delving a little bit more into on their studio albums, but haven't had the chance yet. Then we have another bargain bag find that I have held on to at least thus far. Dirty Vegas with their self-titled album. Uh, in, in pretty decent alt-rock. Then we have a, an incomplete discography. I have kind of a a chunk of their latter discography. I don't have their previous albums. The Dixie Chicks, uh, currently known as The Chicks. Uh, their album Fly. That was, I think, their third album. Then we have the, the follow-up to that one, Home, which has a couple of really good songs on here. They do a cover of Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. It's a very good song. And then, uh, what is... God, there was another one that I thought was really, really good but I can't think of what it is right now. And then we have Taking the Long Way, uh, one of their best albums, and I actually found this deluxe edition with a slipcase and with a DVD in the freebie shelf, if I remember correctly. I, I had the standard edition, but I thought, hey, if I'm getting it, it was, either, it was either free or it was really, really cheap, really inexpensive. So I thought, why not pick it up? And then, of course, their most recent album, Gaslighter, which is also fantastic. And uh, this one, they printed the inserts and also, I believe, the CD itself. Yep, the disc itself still had their previous name, Dixie Chicks, on it. And so, uh, for that reason, it is filed. Even if it did just say the Chicks on it, I would still file it with my Dixie Chicks releases just because I, 
I have to be organized that way, you know, in, in my my funny little head. It has to work that way. So anyway, this next one is a dance pop act from just a couple of years ago, DNCE. This has, as you might know, uh, I believe it's Joe Jonas is one of the members of this group. And uh, those of you who have this album, the American version, uh, are probably surprised to see a jewel case. And that is because this is the Japanese version. And that is the main reason why I got the Japanese version is because it comes in a jewel case. But it also has a couple of, uh, I think it's three bonus tracks. Uh, two remixes, or actually two live versions, Cake by the Ocean and Body Moves, as well as the uh, the non, you know, the, the B-side track, I guess you'd say, Jinx, are unique to the Japanese edition. So, uh, I hear they're doing a second album, or they're at least working on it, or maybe just writing it, but we'll see. And then we have Dr. Hook, a great uh, rock band from the 60s and 70s. Uh, this is their greatest it's album, Greatest Hooks. Uh, I had I had another one, which I think was in my sister's collection, but it was missing several songs that I had wanted. So I kind of was looking around and finally found this one. It had all the stuff that I wanted on it, so swapped it out. And hang on one second, let me get a drink of water here. And then we have the next volume in the the definitive collection series you recognize the the format of the cover uh, this one is dr. John the New Orleans uh, jazz pop rock sort of artist he's hard to categorize we got to put it that way and he has two discs uh, 30 tracks as is customary with this definitive collection series and what do we have here Aiko Aiko, he does a version of that classic folk song, as well as Right Place, Wrong Time. That's a great song. And uh, I've Been Hoodooed. And what's the other? Oh, Accentuate the Positive. And yeah, very good stuff. And uh, this next CD was in my sister's collection. It is an, a more recent Dr. John title, Nolens, Dis, Dat, or Dada. And this one was actually done uh, before Hurricane Katrina. So I, I keep thinking when I see it on the shelf, I keep thinking that, oh, it's a Katrina tribute CD. No, it was done before that. Yes, he is a native of New, Orle New Orleans, so uh, the musical heritage of that city is very, very important to him and to his music. So a good album. And then we have one of my favorite acts from the 50s, Fats Domino. Gotta love it. This uh, compilation was in my favorite compilations of the 2000s video you might remember I counted down my favorite was it 20 or was it just 10 I think and this was well within that countdown what can you say about Fats Domino uh, going home ain't that a shame uh, my blue heaven blueberry hill blue Monday blue Monday is my favorite Fats Domino song uh, I'm walking whole lot of loving uh, I want to walk you home. His entire discography, let's face it. And then we have another very best of the Doobie Brothers in this case. Uh, this was one of my sister's CD. I, I think it was. I knew she, she really loved the Doobie Brothers. And I might have actually gotten this before, uh, before I got her CD collection. But yeah, another great, great act. Uh, listen to the music as well as Long Train Running. And of course, their more recent hits, um, Taken to the Streets, well, comparative, comparatively more recent, you know, still fairly old, but uh, we have, where's, oh, Minute by Minute and What a Fool Believes. Those are, I think those are my two favorite Doobie Brothers tracks. And then we have another uh, American Idol alumnus, or alumna, Melinda Doolittle. Uh, this was in a recent bargain bag, you might remember. So yes great soul and R&B stuff there. And another very best of with a 60s, 60s group, The Doors. Uh, you kind of have to have The Doors in your collection, at least a little bit of their stuff. Uh, kind of like The Beatles and The Rolling Stones, you gotta have something in there, in my opinion anyway. Just, to, just so you have a well-rounded music collection. 
if for no other reason. And then this one was actually in uh, was in my sister's collection. I'm not crazy about it, but uh, I'm hanging on to it mainly because it was in my sister's collection. And you might not realize that this guy made an album, Robert Downey Jr. Yes, the actor, Robert Downey Jr. He put out this album called The Futurist. Uh, kind of avant-garde and a little bit weird, kind of has a little bit, a little bit of a jazz inflection to it. Uh, jazz, but with a little bit of rock and pop, but still, you know, it's all kind of avant-garde a little bit. Uh, but still, it, it was worth keeping for me. Uh, the, the album closes with a cover of the Charlie Chaplin song, Smile, kind of a, a great American songbook standard, I guess you'd say. So, uh, if you're... If you kind of want to be a little adventurous, you know, listen to something that might be a little weird, check out Robert Downey Jr.'s album, especially if you're a fan of his acting. Why not? Right? You can never be afraid to just try something adventurous in music. Yeah. Then we have a uh, an 80s artist here that I picked up. Picked this up at Epic Seconds, I think, uh, about a year ago, a little less than a year ago. The Dream Academy. This is their um, self-titled album. Their most popular song is Life in a Northern Town, and that opens up this album. It's a very a great, it's an almost proggy sort of a song, uh, in a way. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, the whole album is just great synth-pop kind of stuff. Uh, with the exception of that opening track, it's a little bit more proggy. But uh, yeah, The Dream Academy, good, good, good stuff. Then we have a CD that uh, my friend, my dear friend, my little brother Noah gave me. It's actually the, one of the first albums. Uh, one of the first ones that he reviewed on his channel, back when he had a channel, uh, I don't think it was the first one he reviewed, but it was the first video of his that I watched. And that is Dream Car, their self-titled album. has um, members of No Doubt in the band. Uh, so yeah, it's a, uh, a very good album, I, I gotta say. Very, very 80s inspired, uh, which is one reason why I like it. And of course, its significance to my friendship with Noah means it is never leaving my collection until I'm, you know. Then we have a 50s group here, the very best of The Drifters. Some great, great doo-wop here. Uh, Motown is one of my favorite genres, and doo-wop kind of just goes right along with that. That's It's just that great 50s, early 60s soul sound that's, you know, incomparable, really. And what do we have here? This Magic Moment is one of the songs that they were most famous for. Save the Last Dance for Me, that's one of my favorite uh, 50 songs. And Some Kind of Wonderful, along with uh, Up on the Roof, that was one of their big hits as well. On Broadway, another one. So very, very good stuff. Uh, I'm almost never not in the mood for doo-wop, which is kind of, it's the same story with Motown. I, I can take Motown just about any any time, day or night. Well, not night because I'm sleeping. Water break. <clears throat> and then on to the second half of my of this spate of 90s CD, uh, 90 CDs. No, they're not 90s CDs. I have 90 CDs sitting here. Uh, this is a singer-songwriter. Uh, very good, very interesting. I can't remember how I happened upon him. But his name is Matt Duke, and um, yeah, I, I don't really know how to describe him otherwise. Uh, um, Alt-rock singer-songwriter, I guess you'd say. Uh, very good lyrics, very clever lyrics. Uh, the Fathers of the Son and the Harlot's Ghost is one of the song titles here, so that kind of gives you a uh, uh, glimpse of his, uh, his uh, sense of humor, a bit of an irreverent sense of humor, I guess you'd say. And then... Uh, I've got atrophy on the brain is another, the name of another song on here. So, interesting stuff. And then uh, his follow-up album, One Day Die, kind of a dark, uh, bleak-sounding album title and a bleak-looking album cover. And the lyrics are kind of, the lyrics are a little bit darker than they are on his debut, but still a very good album. Uh, Kangaroo Court is one of the better songs on here. Lay is a really, really good love song, and the title. You know, despite its title sounding a little bit naughty, no, it's a uh, it's very, very beautiful, beautiful love song. Psycho Babble is another good one. Uh, Seriously Indulge Me, that's one of the more uh, one of the other outstanding ones on there. So, yeah, 
give Matt Duke a try if you haven't yet. And now we're going into one of the uh, more extensive discographies I have here, so sit back and relax as I take you through Duran Duran's album history. Got their self-titled here, and their sophomore album, Rio. Then we have Seven and the Ragged Tiger, and chugging right along with Notorious. I have them all along with Big Thing, and this actually is, as you can kind of tell by the uh, spine here, the Japanese edition. It's got, I found it, I th was it at Skips? I think it might have been at Skips during their going at a business sale. The second disc just has songs from uh, previous albums, so it's nothing unreleased. There are no um, B side, you know, exclusive B sides to Japan or anything. So, nothing that I didn't already have was on this. It's just the fact that it was a Japanese issue. I decided I had to pick it up. And then we're getting into their their middle period uh, thus far, which is the part of their discography that I'm not the craziest about. Liberty, and uh, oh, with the exception of this album, the the wedding album, so to speak, or their second self-titled album, uh, excellent one. And I have. Oh yes, a CD single, the Come Undone CD single, I have piggybacked on here. So, and uh, I think it has, it has an acoustic demo of The Chauffeur, and I can't remember if uh, To the Shore and or Fallen Angel were on the album or not. Or on previous albums, I can't remember. But there you go. And then I have their covers album, Thank You, which is... This is probably my least favorite album of theirs, uh, but it, but then again, it's been a while since I've listened to it, so I really need to check it out again. And then, uh, yeah, these next two albums are probably my least favorite in their discography, Medazzaland and Pop Trash. Then we're getting into the modern era, I guess you'd say, of Duran Duran uh, with Astronaut. I have the dual disc version can't remember where I picked that up. I, I had the regular uh, CD version before this. and uh, Yes, the dual disc, I, I found it uh, sealed someplace. I can't remember I picked it up. Then we have Red Carpet Massacre, and yes, this is in one of those red-tinted CD cases that I uh, have shown you before. And then uh, All You Need Is Now. And then up to their two most recent albums, Paper Gods and one of my favorite albums of last year, Future Past. So there you go, and this is the deluxe edition with the uh, square bound. And I also have a bunch of, uh, you can see these, uh, I, I don't, know if, don't know if they're actually rice paper or not, but uh, little sleeves that I tend to put uh, CDs in when they come in these square bound uh, cases that, that just have pockets on them to uh, minimize scratching of the CDs when taking them in and out of the pockets. Uh, then we have another uh, American Idol alumnus. We have James Durbin. He was a finalist in, I can't remember what season it was. Uh, decent stuff. I've never been really, really attached to this album, but I've obviously uh, more attached than I am to, than, um, to wanting to get rid of it. That's what I'm, I think I'm trying to say. Anyway. You know what I mean. Listen to what I mean, not what I say. Anyway, then we're on to an artist that... Another artist that I think something of theirs should be in everyone's music collection. I only have two of his albums, or I only have two titles on CD. Uh, Bob Dylan, That's this is an album, a live album that was in my sister's collection. So thank you, Kimmy, for this. The Live at the Gaslight from 1962. And the only other CD that I have of Dylan's is The Essential. Uh, yes, I've never been really, really into Dylan. I've started to appreciate his stuff a little bit more and a little bit more. He is the guy, the artist, the one artist that it's probably taken me the longest to metabolize and really kind of get to know and start to appreciate. So I do have one of his albums on vinyl, uh, Blood on the Tracks, which uh, is actually one of Noah's favorite, or actually might be Noah's favorite Dylan album. Uh, I, I picked it up uh, because it was in a, it ha was having a backtracks anniversary, and because uh, Noah talked it up so much. So 
I've got that one on LP. So, slowly but surely with the Bob Dylan. And then we have another Dylan here, or actually I think it's pronounced Dylan, Felipe Dylan. Uh, he is a Brazilian pop artist, uh, or, or was a pop artist. As uh, far as I know, he's still alive. He just doesn't do music anymore. This is from 2003. And I can't remember how I ca happen happened upon this guy, but the big draw for this for me was it has a couple of... Uh, he covers two, two or it might even be three uh, uh, songs by a favorite boy band of mine. So there you go. And they'll be coming up in one or two chapters from now. They're called Five, and I'll be showing you their albums. But anyway, yeah. That's the main reason I picked up this one. He's okay. Doesn't have the best voice, but to hear uh, some five songs covered in Portuguese. And also, as you know, that's the other thing is I Portuguese is probably my favorite language to hear in song. And I'm not sure why. It's it's just it's it's a very unique language. It's kind of halfway between Spanish and French. It's got some interesting you know. Uh, glottal sounds in it that are unique to Bo to Portuguese. So, anyway, moving right along, we have Earth, Wind, and Fire. This is their one-disc playlist Greatest Hits uh, album. I'm thinking about eventually upgrading this to the two-disc Essentials um, volume, if and when I see it. And then we have... Oh, yeah, never mind. And then we have uh, Echo Smith with their album Talking Dreams. This is their, their debut album, I think. And uh, those of you who have this album might recognize that not only is the cover, does the cover look different, but it's also in a jewel case, something that the domestic version of the CD is not. And that is because this is the Japanese import. And uh, yeah, an interesting band, pretty good. I actually have not listened to their most recent album yet and it it's kind of funny because it you know it took them how many years to come up with their sophomore album yeah this was from 2013 and it took them something like six or seven years to put out their sophomore album then we have uh this is i think the first industrial rock uh band that i ever listened to and i just happened upon them i can't remember how but they're called econoline crush they are a canadian band and this is their debut album, or at least it's their first major label album, I know that. And another interesting thing about this this band, or this art, uh, album in particular, uh, it's produced, recorded, and mixed by Sylvia Massey. Yes, female producers is just something you don't hear a lot about uh, lately. I mean, you know, uh, Linda Perry is basically the big um, female producer. So yeah, I just thought that was interesting to have a, and especially when it's a, male rock band to be produced by a woman. I'm not sure how often that happens. It'd be an interesting thing to look up, huh? Anyway, this is their follow-up album, Brand New History, and the song Make It Right, the opening track on this, is one of my favorite rock songs ever. It's a great, great song. And this one actually is kind of diverse when it comes to um, the content on the album. Uh, May I Go is kind of a breezy, almost reggae sort of a song. And then you have, you know, that, that really hard rocking opening track, Make It Right. So those are kind of like the two extremes of the album. And uh, I thought there was another one on here that I really liked, but I can't remember what it is. But uh, yeah, good album and a good Canadian band that maybe not a lot of people know about. Then we have, here we have yet another uh, act that is thanks to a uh, uh, bargain bag find. Babyface. Uh, this is his debut album, Lovers, which was in... Actually, it was just a month or so ago in a bargain bag. And then the uh, other one that I found, Playlist, which is a much more recent album. It's an album of covers of popular songs. Love this album. And this... Yeah, this one was in, uh, in a bargain bag video, wasn't it? I think it was. And yeah, this is still on track to being possibly my number one favorite bargain bag album of this year. It's that good. Then we have another essential album, uh, the Electric Light, or yeah, Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, yes, a lot of you guys know ELO. They did a cover of Roll Over Beethoven, the song that Chuck Berry did. 
and then of course their own songs don't bring me down all over the world which is a favorite song of mine of theirs and hold on tight and uh, mr blue sky the list goes on and i mean literally the list goes on see then we have this the story behind this cd is kind of interesting uh, it's I, yeah i'm running ahead of time so i can stop for a second until i tell you about it they're called electric touch and the album is called never look back and as far as i know this was their only album but um one day one time when my sister was vis visiting i can still remember for some reason i, I don't know why it's kind of funny the th with the random things that you still remember um, and we were having breakfast one day at a restaurant and uh, they had to drop me off at work and they were mom mom my mom yeah my mom and my sister were gonna go you know have their play day you know just go shopping and whatever and they had to drop me off at work and I asked I asked them to stop by skips I think it was at the time and pick me up the CD because I saw it there passed on it and I changed my mind and wanted it and so they, they did eventually later on that day pick me up the CD and so that's the reason why I'm hanging on to it. The, the main reason. I mean, the music is pretty good, too. It's not not one of the best CDs out there, but still, the songs are good. And uh, so, yeah, just the memories of it. And also, I like the cover. It's got, you know, it's a combination of the the British Union Jack and the American Stars and Stripes. Kind of, it's just kind of, it's a cool cover. If, if I had been doing, you know, my year-end spectacular-ish back in 2012, I think it is, uh, this probably would have gotten the album cover of the year from me. Uh, but yes, I believe, it is, I believe it's 2012. Yeah, 2012. The year that my sister passed away. So yes, this was, that's one of the reasons why it's so special. It was because it was on one of her last visits that I asked them to pick this up. So anyway, to make a long story even longer, uh, Don't Stop, the opening track is really good. And uh, All the Love is another really good one good one the human factor is another good song so uh yeah it's produced by howard benson who was a a relatively well-known rock producer so yeah a bit of an a bit of an electro rock sound kind of like the killers i would kind of compare these guys to the killers yeah a pretty safe comparison in that uh, respect so water break Then we move along to, <clears throat> this is an artist that I covered in my one and thus far only episode of Discography, which I was going to have as a recurring feature, just talking about the history of a particular artist or band and showing you all of their albums, uh, which I'm doing here again. The band is called Eleven, and if you go searching my, discography, my uh, YouTube channel, it's one of my first videos where I do Discography of Eleven. It's not one of my better videos, frankly. Uh, it was I was a lot more. It was back when I was still very stiff and and uh, rigid in, in front of the camera, but still, I think it was pretty good. Anyway, this is their debut album, "Awake in a Dream," and this one this is one of my favorite albums of the '90s and one of my favorite albums of all time. There is not a song on here that I don't like, uh, except but the the ones that are my big favorites here are "Rainbow's End." and uh, You Are Mine, and Before Your Eyes, and yeah, there's, it's just, the, it's a great band. The unique thing about Eleven is the two uh, artists who traded off on vocals, uh, Alan, Alan Johannes, I'm probably mispronouncing him, he spells it like French, Alain Johannes, and Natasha Schneider. And they both have really deep voices and very, very distinctive voices. So, and, and you know me, you've heard me talk about how much I love distinctive voices in the music I listen to. Theirs are two of the most distinctive. And another kind of a hallmark of this band's sound back in the day was the melody line or the, the guitar would follow the vocals. I, there's probably a musical term for that. It's, you know, where, where the guitar speaks the guitar sings right along with the vocalist. So that was kind of a, a, a characteristic of their sound back then. It was really interesting. Maybe not for everyone. And Eleven is unusually hard rock 
for the kind of music that I listen to. So that's another thing, another reason they stand out in my discography is I don't usually like music that, that that's this hard. But anyway, this is their sophomore album. This is self-titled. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then their third album, Funk. Followed by their fourth album and best titled album, Avant Garde Dog. I love the title of this album. And then their final album, uh, uh, Howling Book. And uh, unfortunately, just a few years after, actually it was like six or seven years after this, uh, Natasha Schneider passed away from cancer. So the, the band is basically no more. I mean, they wouldn't be 11 without Natasha Schneider's vocals, let's face it. Uh, but yes, good songs on each and every album. And yes, this was over, let me see, 1991 was when Awaken a Dream came out, and 2003 was when A Howling Book came out. And yes, they only put out five albums over that entire span of time. So they were not a very prolific band, and they were on a different label, label for almost each album. Yes, um, four, four, different label, four different labels over their five album career. So, uh, and I don't see why they, why no label was able to hang on to them. Because they, they were just, well, they just kind of fell, out, fell through the cracks and didn't get the publicity push that they really deserved to get because their music was fantastic. So. Anyway, moving on, if I want to maintain a relatively decent length uh, for this video without making it too long, uh, Elizabeth and the Catapult. This is a great, um, how would I describe this band? Not quite folk pop, maybe a little bit more rock than folk pop really, but uh, a, a great group. Uh, this is their debut album, Taller Children, and their sophomore album, The Other Side of Zero. Really enjoyed both of these. Uh, yes, on Taller Children, uh, Rainiest Day of Summer is a really, really good song. And uh, Everybody Knows is another one, another good one. And on uh, The Other Side of Zero, I was going to call it Too Low for Zero. That's that's a different uh, band. Uh, Julian Darling is a great, great song. And uh, Go Away My Lover. Uh, let's see. Do not, do not Hang Your Head is another really good song, so good stuff on these albums. And also during Skip's Going Out of Business Sale, I picked up their third album, Like It Never Happened. Uh, I don't like this one as much as I like their first two, but still a very good album. Gosh, this is really light. Is the CD? Yeah, the CD's in here. It's just, it's, it's very, it's light as a feather. Uh, so yes, a good uh, artist, a good band, if you have not checked out Elizabeth and the Catapult. And I think they might have an album, I think they might have put out an album since, uh, like it never happened, but I have not checked it out yet. Shame on me. Uh, now this next CD is uh, was in my sister's collection. It is Night Moves by Kurt Elling. Uh, this guy is a jazz vocalist, and I think, I'm not sure why she had she had this CD in her collection, but I can kind of suspect uh, they do a cover of a Guess Who song called Undone, or he does a cover of a Guess Who song called Undone in here, and did he also do... No, maybe he, maybe he didn't do a cover of another song, but uh, my sister was a huge Guess Who fan, so I have, a, I have a feeling that song, Undone, at least had something to, to do with why she picked up this album. But uh, he's a very good vocalist, and yeah, he's good enough that I decided to pick up another of his albums, The Gate. And this one has uh, this one has a cover of the Joe Jackson song "Steppin' Out," along with um, Norwegian Wood, the uh, John Lennon song. And I thought there was another one that he covered in here. Oh, and another interesting thing about this one—it's produced by Don Was, who, uh, you know, v jazz vocal stuff is something that Don Was doesn't normally produce. So I figured I'd pick it up and check it out, and I liked it. Then we have. Uh, one of my favorite vocalists of all time, Cass Elliot. Uh, this is Dream a Little Dream, the music of Mama Cass Elliot, uh, greatest hits collection of hers. Uh, it's fantastic stuff. Uh, love her voice. Uh, Dream a Little Dream of Me, one of my favorite songs. And uh, I got into Cass Elliot because she was, uh, 
her music played a prominent role in an LGBTQ movie from 1996, I think it was. Uh, what's it called? Oh, it's called Beautiful Thing. That's the name of the movie. It was a British movie. And uh, yes, her music, as well as uh, a little bit of music of the Mamas and the Papas, uh, were, was featured prominently in here. Uh, let's see, what do we have? One Way Ticket is a great song. And It's Getting Better. That's one of my favorite songs. And Make Your Own Kind of Music. I love that song. That one's, that one's one of my favorites. Possibly my favorite Cass Elliot song. So good stuff. Now this one is an album that probably none of you have. None of you have even heard of this guy, except maybe uh, in his capacity as a producer, because he is a very well-known producer. But he did at some point put out an album of his own. Uh, he called, he built himself on this album as Eman. Uh, his name is Emmanuel Kiriaku. He is a producer, as I said. But sometimes I wish he'd have stuck. <clears throat> excuse me. Sometimes I wish he would have stuck with the recording artist thing, because this album is unbelievably good. Um, Falling is a great song, and I happened upon that song, Falling, because he actually teams up with, and you'll see this in a future chapter, uh, Joey McIntyre, a former new kid on the block who went on to do a solo career. Uh, he and Eman did a live album together, and Falling was one of the songs that they did. And I just love that song. It's got such a unique uh, a unique sound to it. Uh, that's one of my favorite songs. And uh, what do we have? Wonderfully Strange. That's another fantastic song. Uh, those two songs are just the best songs on the album, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, excellent album. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you will ever be able to find it. I, I kind of doubt that it's on streaming, but Favorite Enemy is the name of the album. It's by E-Man. If you get the chance to check it out, I strongly urge you to check it out. And then we have another CD from my sister's collection. This is Works Volume 1 by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Uh, not huge into prog rock. I've tried to get into it uh, before, but uh, I, I will not give this one up because it was in my sister's collection. Yes, some uh, solo stuff by each of the members, as well as a couple of songs by the group members all together. So, interesting stuff, and I'm very, very happy to have it in my collection. And uh, this next one is, I can't remember if it was a bargain bag CD or if it was just one that I picked up on the dollar shelf at Epic Seconds, but I know I picked it up at Epic Seconds. Empire of the Sun. This is their debut album, Walking on a Dream. It's kind of got that uh, theatrical electropop kind of thing. Yeah, theatrical electropop, I think is the best way to, to describe these guys. Um, have not been compelled yet to check out subsequent albums of theirs, but uh, I am still strongly considering it. And now, and down to the final two albums in this block of my whole CD collection. The English Beat, uh, with their album Special Beat Service. Uh, this was, uh, this group was just called The Beat in the UK. Uh, I, I guess there was a band with that name here in the States, so they had to put the word English in their title to be, uh, you know, to be circulated or released here in the States. And anyway, there's a spider on my ceiling. Sorry. Uh, but yes, this is uh, uh, two of their best hits, I think. Yeah, two of their greatest hits are from this album, I Confess and Save It For Later. Great songs. And another song, which I cannot remember which one it was, was featured in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So, trivia note for you. And yes, this is the Shout Factory reissue that has a handful of bonus tracks on it. So, there you go. Good stuff. Uh, great stuff from the 80s. And then the final CD in today is the first one in a handful of CDs by, that I have by this artist. So she will be picking up at the beginning of the next chapter. Enya, this is her album Shepherd Moons. This is just great, great stuff to relax by. And, you know, when you're looking to unwind after a hard day. Uh, Caribbean Blue is on this album. And wasn't there another good song in here? I cannot remember... I can't remember by its title. Was it Book of Days? I think, anyway. Uh, good stuff. Great um, atmospheric, Celtic, moody, pop, new agey kind of stuff. I guess that's a way to describe it. But yes, that is the 
next block of 90 CDs in my Hold On CD collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, look forward pretty soon. Uh, it may not be for a few weeks uh, to chap Chapter 7, Lucky Chapter 7. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, follow. Check out my past videos. Every video in my Hold On CD collection is in its own playlist. Just look for, uh, look for the CD collection playlist in my YouTube channel's homepage. You can watch from the beginning if you want to, if you have hours and hours of free time. Anyway, uh, be sure and check out my Instagram, Instagram and Twitter feeds in the links below, as well as some YouTube friends who are all worth watching. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, see you in another week or two. And remember, life's too short to be a uh, Let's try that again. Life's too short to be a music snob. See you next time.